how do false teachers try to cover up this teaching today? Well, for one thing, they rely on the gullibility of their followers, or the blind trust of their followers. A lot of people grow up in churches and they just believe whoever's in charge at that church, and they're just like, all right, I'll take it from them, they know what they're talking about. Not always the case. Do your research. But here's what they do. They go to passages like Galatians 2. Galatians 2 says, We ourselves are Jews by birth, and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Christ Jesus, in order to be justified by faith in Christ, and not by works of the law, because by works of the law no one will be justified. You might understand what's happening here already, but let's keep going. They also go to things like Romans 3.20, For by works of the law no human being will be justified in his sight. Romans 3.28, We hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. So, false teachers of Christianity will go to these passages. They'll read this and they'll say, see, the Bible says that a person is not justified by works, but through faith alone in Jesus Christ. But that's not what it says at all, is it? Those verses actually say a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight. We hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. So, if someone is teaching you that the Bible says a person is not justified by works, but through faith alone in Jesus Christ, then there's actually two things wrong with that claim. First of all, none of those verses say faith alone. They just say faith. So false teachers would need to be adding in the word alone to all those verses. If I said you need bread to make toast, that's not the same as saying you need bread alone to make toast. You could also need a toaster, an outlet to plug the toaster into. You might also need electricity flowing to that outlet, etc., etc. Feel free to read the entire Bible. I can guarantee you that you'll never find anything in there that says we are justified by faith alone. That is not a real Christian teaching. That was made up by people like Martin Luther. Faith alone is an anti-Christian and anti-biblical teaching. And remember, the only time the Bible ever mentions faith alone is specifically when it tells us that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Secondly, those verses are talking about works of the law, not works in general. Christians believe in the teachings of all these verses. And Christians believe in the teachings of this verse. There's nothing contradictory about saying a person is justified by works and not by faith alone, and also saying a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Because one of these verses is talking about works, and the other is talking about works of the law. And while one says we are justified by faith, the other one clarifies that while faith does justify us, it's not faith alone. So all of this fits perfectly together if you read it correctly. I've actually heard some people try to teach that, well, there's more that say you don't need the works, and there's only the one that says you do, so just go with the one that there's more of. No, that's stupid. Go with all of them. Because if you actually look at what they're saying, they don't conflict with each other. They're all teaching you parts of the same thing. In the Bible, you can find that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Because people are justified by faith. You can also find a person is justified by works, and not by faith alone. Because in addition to people being justified by faith, they are also justified by works. Now are they justified by all works? No, the Bible even specifies. A person is not justified by works of the law. But remember, while all works of the law are works, not all works are works of the law. According to the Word of God in the Bible, there are works that people are justified by. The Word of God in the Bible also specifies something about those works, and that's that the works that are justifying people are not works of the law. Let's go back to Dictionary.com's Words of the Day. If I tell you, a person is not to give a speech using words of the day, but with a dance routine. A person is to give a speech using words, and not by a dance routine alone. If that's the criteria for your speech, are you being asked to give a speech that is a dance routine alone, and not using any words at all? No. You're being asked to give a speech that includes a dance routine and words, but not words of the day. Likewise, people are justified by faith and works, but not works of the law. The false teaching of faith alone has spread because Christians are not doing the reading. Just look at the facts. Certain verses are talking about specific works, works of the law. And then this other verse is talking about other works works that a person is justified by. If this is news to anyone and you don't know what works of the law are, I'd advise you doing research on it. Works of the law refer to specific types of work, such as circumcision or separating yourself from the Gentiles while eating. These were certain things that were done way back when. And actually, if you look at the sections we were looking at before, where we just read about not being justified by works of the law, then you can see that they're specifically talking about these types of works. Going back to Romans, we can see that Paul was talking about circumcision. For circumcision indeed is of value if you obey the law, but if you break the law, your circumcision becomes uncircumcision. So if a man who is uncircumcised keeps the precepts of the law, will not his uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? 
Then what advantage has the Jew, or what is the value of circumcision? We hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles also? Yes, of Gentiles also, since God is one, who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. Is the blessing then only for the circumcised, or also for the uncircumcised? So the works being referred to here are not all works, but simply works of the law. Martin Luther and several other false teachers of Christianity teach people that we just need faith alone and not works. Just gonna scoot over here. If you're interested in how to be Christian, then you should believe in the teachings of Jesus and all of his followers. These people help teach Christians that we are justified by works and by faith. Not by faith alone, but by faith and works. So if a false teacher of Christianity ever tries to teach you that all you need is faith alone, ask them where you can verify that in the Word of God. A common assertion made by proponents of work salvation is that the Word of God is specifically and solely referring to works of the law when it seemingly promotes a justification by faith alone to the exclusion of man's deeds. However, this argument is proven unbiblical when we examine key passages pertaining to our justification. For example, Romans chapter 11, verse 6, the Word of God says this, And if by grace, watch this, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. The Word of God is explicitly clear that grace and works are mutually exclusive, meaning if salvation is by grace, which it is, then it cannot be of works. And if salvation is of works, then it cannot be by grace. Salvation is either by grace or by works, but it cannot be by both. I'll say that again. Salvation is either by grace or by works, but it cannot be by both. This principle alone completely contradicts the idea that justification can include works of any kind. Titus chapter 3, starting off in verse 5, the Bible says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done. How clear, how consistent. Let's read that again not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us, how? By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through who? Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified, how? By his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Notice, we are justified by God's grace to the exclusion of works of righteousness which we have done. Not solely works of the law, but works of righteousness as a whole. Romans chapter 4, starting off in verse 2, For if Abraham were justified by works... He hath whereof to glory, but not before who? God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. According to the word of God, Abraham was justified how? By faith without works. You say, well, again, that's solely and specifically referring to works of the law. Wait a minute, how can that be when Abraham lived before the law? Look at verse 4. Now, to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, don't miss that, but of debt. Again, salvation is either by grace or by works, but it cannot be by both. As soon as you attempt to include any work, you nullify grace. Look at verse 5. But to him that worketh not. 
Let's read that again. But to him that worketh not. One more time. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man, watch this, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Logically, salvation cannot be both with works and without works. It is either one or the other. John chapter 6 verse 28. Then said they unto him, what shall we do? Notice this that we might work the works, plural, of God. Notice, man assumes and presents a plurality of works system. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, singular, that ye, what, believe on him whom he hath sent. So, according to Christ, the sole condition for salvation from sin's penalty, the singular work of God is faith in Christ, excluding what? Works of any kind. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. First and foremost, we see that salvation is by God's grace, which of course signifies that it cannot include works. Secondly, we see that it is through faith, the sole condition for justification. Thirdly, the word of God specifies that this salvation is not of yourselves, meaning it is not a joint effort. My friend, get this through your head. He is the savior. You are the sinner. He doesn't need your filthy rags. Next, we see that salvation is God's gift to give, not our reward to earn. Watch this. A gift is paid for by the giver and accepted freely by the recipient. That's common sense. If there is any work included in the reception of this gift, then it ceases to be a gift. Finally, the word of God reiterates that salvation is not of works, lest any man should boast. Don't miss this. If works of any kind... I repeat, if works of any kind are involved in man's justification, then logically man has a basis to boast before God. If you are not 100% certain that you're going to heaven when you die, I encourage you to watch the video in the description below, How to Be Saved from Hell, The Only Way to Heaven, and Be Saved Today. God bless.